Hello and welcome back to Abandoned Mines of Pennsylvania. Today we're going to be covering blasting and underground mining. Uh, before we get started, I do have to ask, please do not attempt to reenact or recreate any of the demonstrations you see here today. Uh, this is going to be a two-part video. Uh, this first one's going to be an introduction to the history, tools, and techniques. And then part two, we're going to be doing a live black powder shot on surface. Um, so we're not involving the hazards of underground mines. Uh, so to get started, um, blasting underground first used black powder. Black powder came about in China in the 9th century. It's a mixture of sulfur, saltpeter, otherwise known as potassium nitrate, and charcoal. Um, when mixed in the right proportions, this compound will deflagrate or burn rapidly at a subsonic rate. Um, creates a lot of heat and a lot of gas and that gas when confined will help push things out of the way and so if you were mining in either hard rock or coal and you were to set just a black powder charge or just put black powder at the face and set it off it wouldn't do anything but char the rock and so what you would want to do is you want to get it inside the rock and so, to do this, in hard rock, you used a star bit in the early days. And so what you would do is hold a, hold a steel, have another guy behind you swinging a hammer, and you would hit, quarter turn the bit, hit, quarter turn, hit, quarter turn, and repeat until your hole was drilled to its desired depth. Um, with coal being softer than a lot of hard rock, what you could do is use an auger, which is like a big drill bit, um, operated by hand, you would turn it, it would cut the coal, and again, into your desired depth. Now, if we were to just take our black powder charge then and put it inside the hole, what would happen is it would just act like a gun barrel and would fire all those gases right back out the hole. And so what you would do is after you place your charge in there, you would want to tamp the hole. And so you would pick up either the cuttings that just came out of the hole or any other loose material on the floor, or the clays, anything like that, and you pack this hole tight. And so then now we can find that gas to do more work. Um, kind of a little diagram here. And so as you can see, if you imagine this is our face, here's our floor. And so we would drill our holes back and place our charges. And if we tamp these and ignore this part down here for now and then set them off, all this energy will be directed still back out this way. Um, there's no resistance here. And so if you were blasting coal or hard rock, especially with coal, what this would do is basically pulverize it, which is not what you wanted. Um, you wanted your larger pieces so they could be uh, broken at the breaker and sorted into many different sizes, but if it was just pulverized dust back in the day, it didn't really have a use. So one thing that would help is if you performed what was called an undercut. And so if you can imagine these holes going back in about six foot, what the miner would do is initially in the early days, he would lay on his side, use a pickaxe to reach back under as far as he could, and he would clear all the coal and material out from underneath this face. Now, once his charges were placed, he could use a lesser amount of explosives. And when he set them off, this coal face was, would essentially just kind of fluff down, fall out, so you'd be left with bigger, uh, bigger pieces and it wouldn't be pulverized. And so, we need to set our charge off that's back in that hole. Now if we just tamp the whole thing completely shut, we wouldn't be able to get anything in there. And so what they would use was called a needle. And we're gonna go outside and we're gonna look at one here in a minute. Um, but a needle was a large brass or copper um, rod. And that would be inserted into the charge after it was placed in the hole and would be left there. The miner would take that material and he would tamp it using his tamp rod uh, which had a notch that would fit over top of that needle. He'd tamp this material back in there, and then 
once the hole was tamped, he would carefully withdraw that needle and that would leave a path all the way back from the face to his black powder charge. Then what he would do is he would place one of these. This is called a rocket squib. Um, we're on this box here, an improved safety squib, rocket number one. And what this is, is it's essentially a bottle rocket without the stick. On the back here for a fuse, it has sulfur paper. And so when ignited, this just slowly smolders and would give the miner time to get out of the area. And it would smolder up until it hits the body, in which case it ignites another black powder charge and this would rocket back into the hole made by the needle, reach our black powder charge and set it off. And so for our black powder charge, we're not just going to take loose black powder and try to cram it back in the hole. So what you would do is make one of these. So this is a cartridge. Um, in the later years, these could be bought, um, but usually they were either prepared by the miner um, or by his wife who was at home. She would be preparing charges for him at work. Uh, however, they were prepared. Uh, this one here is brown paper uh, dipped in wax to make it waterproof. Um, this one doesn't have anything in it at the moment. And this would be filled with black powder and folded over. Um, he would take all of his charges in with him for the day. And this would this is what would be inserted back into the hole and tamped. So then when that needle came in, it would puncture a hole uh, in the front of the charge. And then the rocket squib would make contact with it. This would explode. Um, after black powder, um, in 1867, Alfred Nobel uh, invented what we know as dynamite. So before that, we had an explosive called nitroglycerin. Um, nitroglycerin was a very powerful explosive, but it was an extremely unstable explosive. And so it took very little heat shock or friction to set it off. So when I say a high explosive, black powder is a low explosive. When it goes off, um, as I said before, it deflagrates. Um, burns very rapidly, but at a subsonic rate. High explosives, their chemical reaction happens at a supersonic rate, so above the speed of sound. And so nitroglycerin, like I said, extremely unstable. And Alfred Nobel is the one who figured out that when absorbed into certain types of clay um, and sawdust materials, it helped absorb that shock and made the nitroglycerin, now dynamite, more stable and user friendly. And so when this was tamped back into the holes, it wouldn't just go off. But now the problem was a rocket squib won't set off dynamite. So Alfred Nobel also invented the blasting cap. And so what a blasting cap is, is a series of more sensitive explosives that when stepped up in reaction will set off your main charge, in this case dynamite. Um, first they came out with a non-electric version and then later they came out with an electric version. Um, I have a little diagram here of an electric version. Um, the only difference between this and non-electric is instead of an electric filament you would just be inserting a fuse directly into here. Um, has a plug at the back. If it was non-electric, it would be a crimp. And then you have your least, sorry, your most sensitive explosive, uh, which in Alfred Novell's case was a fulminated mercury. And then that would set off a, a more powerful explosive. Uh, in other cases, uh, especially today, as we use blasting gels, which are, um, whether it be ammonium nitrate based, they're extremely insensitive. So they're very safe to handle, but very hard to set off. And so you would need a booster of some sort of uh, like an RDX. But in this case here, I do have a three stage. So it'd be set off by like your mercury fulminate, um, like non-electric as the fuse would provide the heat in electric. There's basically a light bulb filament in there that when currents provided heats up, sets off this first one. 
which then can set off the second more powerful charge, which then can set off this third most powerful charge in the cap, which will be at the detonation velocity of your high explosive. So if we use dynamite in a coal mine or black powder, one problem that we have is in a lot of coal mines you have a methane issue. And so, especially in the black powder days and a lot of the um, inspector of mine reports you can read about after setting off a shot, the flame and sparks from the black powder igniting what they call jets of methane gas. And so methane that's trapped in the coal would be released in the blast and then ignited um, by the black powder. So this caused mine fires, burn injuries to miners, etc. Same thing with dynamite. Um, in the early days, produced a lot, of, a lot of flame with it as well and sparks, and this would also ignite methane. Um, whether it was seeping out of the face or trapped in the face. And so with that, you could either set off a, a larger mine explosion with the coal dust and the methane, or like I said before, ignite a jet and then set your coal seam on fire, and now you have a mine fire. Um, through years of development, they figured out a way to make it permissible, um, which means that it's safe to use in a underground environment that has explosive atmospheres. And so um, it didn't have as much of a flame uh, or sparks as the older dynamites, and so it wouldn't ignite the methanes or coal dust. So if we move, well, these are real quick. These are just different, different holders for your rocket squibs. This one here is wooden, um, which is nice because there's no risk of spark with it. Um, just a couple examples. Some different packaging of rocket squibs. And then another container here. And so when I talked about deflagration of black powder, on the block in front of us here, we do have a small amount of black powder. And so if we ignite this, you see it does just burn rapidly. And then when I talk about our need for confinement, um, if you imagine if you take that same black powder and you pack it tightly, And this is the result. This is why you tamp your charge. And so that does a lot more work for us. So now we're going to head outside. Out of the smoke. So we can see here, uh, these are a few of the different augers. Um, they came in a lot of different diameters and lengths. Um, this one on the left here in particular, this is about an eight foot. Um, and we have a, a shorter, shorter one, and then a, another long skinny one here. For performing our undercut afterwards, this is a, a flat shovel that a miner had made um, for cleaning out the undercut, just to help get some of the material out of there before you fired your shot. This particular tool here was used for cleaning out your drill hole uh, before you place your charge in. And then this here is our needle. So it does have a metal, uh, an iron handle on it, uh, but this whole piece here is all uh, copper or brass uh, for non-spark because you didn't want to set your charge off by running your needle in. Sorry for the wind. Uh, this other rod here, this is our camp. And so you can see this notch in the top here. This would actually fit over top of your needle. And so as you would tamp in, uh, you'd have your needle in there, pack it, and again the end of this would either be copper or brass for non-sparking. Some other oddballs that we have here. Uh, this is a, an old powder box a miner would use to carry his charges into the mine. 
Uh, it's all wooden, all dovetail, so there's no metal uh, to draw any sparks. This would lift up and his charges would be in there. Talked about the Dynablank. This is a DuPont. You notice here it says permissible, so it's safe for use underground. 25 pounds and the sticks were one and a half inches by eight inches long. This here, you've probably seen in some of the old cartoons. Um, this is what's used to generate the electric charge to set off an electric blasting cap. So this particular one, if we look, made by Hercules, and this is a 50 cap blasting machine. And so this one machine here would be able to set off up to 50 blasting caps. Um, it says connect in series as shown. And so you would have one leg wire of your caps connected to this, the other leg connected to this. Uh, this contains a magneto inside, and so as you draw up on the handle and then push down hard, you hear the magneto in there spinning, and that would generate the electric charge to set off the caps. So I appreciate everyone uh, checking in today. Let me get down the wind here. So, said so part two, we're going to be doing an actual shot. Uh, it'll be on the surface, but the charge is going to be placed in the ground. So if anyone has any questions on anything they saw today, please leave them in the comments or free, feel free to send us a message. Uh, don't forget to like, share, um, either on the Facebook page or on the, our YouTube channel at Abandoned Mines of Pennsylvania. And we'll see you in part two. Thank you, everyone.